My name is Gavin Evans and this is my Wii review of The Batman. And this review will have spoilers, so there's your warning. But when I first saw this movie, I didn't like it. I thought the direction and the visuals were really strong, but the script I didn't like at all. And it really bummed me out because I heard so many people call this movie amazing and say that they love it. And I wanted to be a part of that crowd. And since then, I've heard more and more praise for this movie. I've heard some people watch it a ridiculous amount of times. I've heard some people who used to not like it now love it. And I'm just like, what am I missing? So I got an itch to revisit it. And I'm just like, maybe I'd like it better this rewatch. And after watching this movie again... I still think it's a really bad movie. I'm just on a completely different wavelength than everyone else regarding the Batman. Now look, I love what Matt Reeves is trying to do here by going back to the detective roots of the character and I love some of the additions he brings to him. Like I love the fact that he records his entire night and then watches the recordings and takes notes that's really great. I think Batman looks great. I like the unique Batmobile heel. And the direction to this movie is fantastic. Like if Matt Reeves did get nominated for Best Director, I, I wouldn't complain. The craftsmanship is undeniable and the cinematography by Greg Fraser is so beautiful. This movie is just oozing with atmosphere and I love that about it. I thought the sound design is very strong, especially the Batmobile and the chasing. It's such a little bit of sound, but he hits a bunch of cones and you just go like boom, 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 boom. I just like that sound. Uh, the score by Michael Giacchino, I do like. I didn't like it as much this viewing as it did the first. I do found that it replayed the same theme a few too many times. And I love the introduction to Batman at the beginning, the narration, how the bat symbol isn't just a symbol for him to go there, it's a warning sign for the criminals. I love that. But. Like if you had this level of atmosphere and craftsmanship and had a great script, I'd love this movie. But the script is bad. And I know I always talk about in movies like Avatar how it's not as reliant on the script. It's reliant on the filmmaking, the visuals. But the difference here is that this movie is very story heavy. It's reliant on this detective story. It's reliant on these characters. It's trying to do a lot more and failing at it, if you ask me. So that's why it matters to me when I'm watching this movie. And just so much of this movie, I find to be convoluted. Okay, we're investigating the iceberg now. We're dealing with the corrupt cops now. We're dealing with Catwoman now. We're dealing with Falcone now. We're dealing with the Riddler now. It just feels very episodic in some ways, in a way that didn't have a smooth feel to it, and just felt very messy. I also feel like you could have gotten rid of the character Catwoman entirely, and the movie wouldn't change almost at all. And a big part of why this story doesn't work is that it actually feels generic, because there's no real character to it. There's no real emotion or weight to anything going on like Bruce Wayne is an empty vessel of a character and I get it the whole point is that he has just lost himself in Batman but because of that there's nothing for me to connect to there's nothing for me to get emotionally engaged with and I just didn't care about this character so when we find out about his mom and dad and how they want perfect people, none of that had any weight to it because why would I care? I don't care about Bruce Wayne. His parents were barely mentioned until then. So 
it just had no build up to it and it's supposed to be this huge revolution and revelation and I'm just like I don't give a shit and then the whole character arc of Bruce Wayne I didn't find convincing in the slightest bit I find the the fact that he goes by the name Vengeance and that's what everybody calls him I think is actually ridiculously stupid and it's very in your face and then oh he's attacking one of Riddler's goons and what does he say I'm Vengeance <gasps> I'm just like you oh like it's just so on the nose and it's thinks it's smarter than it actually is and it just allows for a very surface level look of vengeance and hope because even though he calls himself vengeance because of his parents and all that the crime he tries to stop isn't really personally motivated he is doing good he is stopping criminals from doing terrible things like beating up that guy in the beginning of the movie but it's trying to make it seem like he's only motivated by vengeance. And I feel like that's a very disingenuous look of looking at the character. And how he needs to be more hopeful. And help the people. And like he was still helping people at the start though. And I just don't think anything character wise works. I, I get what the movie thinks it's doing and what people get from it. I just am not there with you. And on top of that, as someone who's loved Batman like my entire life, I grew up watching the animated series, I've played the Arkham games so many times, I've watched Batman Beyond, I've watched Young Justice even though he's not in that much, I just love this character. Batman has never represented hope. Ever. He's always been vengeance. And this movie seems to hate that fact about him. When you look at who he is in the beginning of the movie, when he takes down those thugs, you're meant to see him as this brutal, harsh, mean guy. And it's just like, yeah, that's what I like about him. I don't think he needs to change. And it's trying to be like, oh, well, there's a thin line between him and the Riddler. And get to that in a moment, but... I think the movie just doesn't have the level of depth that's required for these themes. Uh, some other complaints before I get to the characters is that I think the action lacks any bit of tension. It's very well shot. I love the scene when he's attacking the guys and it's only lit by the gunfire. That's great. But he's just too indestructible. Well, he's not even trying to protect his face people are just shooting at him and it just does nothing until one time at the end where it does and I prefer the more stealth tactics of Batman uh, I don't like the scene when he calls Alfred and it turns out the bomb already went off it's a misdirect to the audience but I feel like it would have been infinitely more effective if he's heading towards Alfred He's trying to call, there's no answer, and he sees the smoke in the air. No reason for that misdirect. And even though I like the atmosphere of this movie, I like the score, the soundtrack choice of that Nirvana song is stupid to me. It feels so out of place. And, like I said, I like the opening Batman introduction, but the scene that actually comes before that when Riddler attacks that guy, it's very weird because I don't think that's needed at all. It feels like the movie has two different openings and the other one's much better and that scene doesn't have the mere amount of atmosphere or the horse that was desperately needed for it. And then you talk about too many openings, this movie also has too many endings. First of all, it's way too long. This movie could have easily been two hours. and. When Riddler blows up the dam and all that, I just found it to be like, oh, this is still going? Really? I don't like the third act threat at all. And then it's wrapping up and then we get this unneeded Joker scene that felt like it should have been at the end of the credits maybe. And then you get this scene of him and Catwoman saying goodbye that had zero emotion. And I'm like, okay, the movie 
open too many times and now it's wrapping up too many times. It just feels like a, a big mess pacing wise. And if we get to the cast, Robert Pattinson, I've been a big defender of him for a few years now and I think he was really well casted. Perfect choice if you ask me. Unfortunately, like I said, he has nothing to work with. He has the physical presence as Batman, but character-wise, he just is very bland, and I don't blame him. Andy Serkis as Alfred, good, unique choice, but I also couldn't care less about the relationship between him and Bruce because he just has nothing to work with. Jeffrey Wright, in my original review, I said I loved, and he might be my favorite Gordon yet. I take that back. Gary Oldman is still my favorite. And I'm not saying Jeffrey Wright does a bad job, but his character is just very surface level. I would have loved a bit more depth to him. Zoe Kravitz is a good choice for Catwoman, and she does a fine job. Um, I don't think she was needed, but with the material she has to work with, she's fine. You've got Colin Farrell, which, by the way, the makeup in this movie looks great, and he just brings so much life and personality to this character. He has some of the best lines, and it could have been a really forgettable side character, but he just elevated him. Best performance in the movie, hands down. Uh, John Titor, he's really good in this movie. I think he was well casted as Falcone. You've got Barry Keoghan as the Joker, and I'm just going to be honest, um, I'm just done with this character. Um, Heath Ledger did a great job, but it just feels like we're getting the same kind of Joko time and time again. This feels like like yet another attempt, and I'm just, we've seen him so many times. If you're going to do Joko again, make him more Mark Hamill-ish than Heath Ledger-ish. I'm just, not saying he does a bad job, I'm just, I just wish they took, they're taking this character in a different direction. In fact, I wish he just wasn't in it at all. And then we get to Paul Dano, who lots of people say is one of the best Batman villains, and I strongly disagree. I think he's honestly one of the worst Batman villains ever. I, I would take Jim Carrey's Riddler over Paul Dano's. I think Paul Dano is that bad. Now, I'll give credit where credit is due. I do like the writing behind the Riddles. It's not Riddles for kids. They're very well thought out, so kudos to the script in that regard, but his performance and the way this character's written, it just feels like that scene when Joker recorded himself in The Dark Knight just over and over again, and he's so loud and over the top, and it's just a performance that never works for me. I found it to be unbearably annoying. He never came across as menacing. His costume looks fucking stupid. And in some ways, I feel like it would have been a better take on this character if he was captured early on, but there was still Riddles appearing, and it's because there was a network of Riddlers. I feel like you had that in the end of the movie, and it would have been better to introduce that early on, and that way he manifests the ideas of this character so well. And like I said, they're trying to create a thin line between him and Batman, like what's the difference? Well, the truth is, the Riddler isn't exactly wrong for lots of this movie. He's exposing the corrupt cops and politicians in Gotham. But they're like, uh, guys, he might actually have a point. Oh, uh, you're right. W what do we do now? Uh, flood the city! That way people know he's the villain. And it just does the character dirty. And... Yeah, I, I just feel like the writing there was really weak. Like, if you're trying to create that thin line between Batman and the Riddle, what always worked for me in the past was that Batman wasn't willing to kill. And they don't explore that here. Or you got something like Mask of the Phantasm, which I think does that idea much better, with much more depth to the characters, and just here, it's all surface level. So... Yeah, I still don't like this movie. I think it's a really bad Batman movie, and if I'm being honest, it's boring. I'm not going to say it here, but there are some superhero movies I would watch over this one any day of the week because this movie is so long and so slow and so boring, and it's not even a good movie. The direction and the look and the atmosphere of this movie, amazing. Love it. But the script 
It's reliant on the script and the mystery isn't good. It doesn't have nearly enough depth to the characters for me to care about anything going on. There's no weight to anything. I thought the writing was just really bad in this movie and Riddler is a terrible villain. So hopefully the sequel's better because I was very excited for this movie. I was hoping I'd like it better this rewatch, but nope. So I'll give the Batman my original rating and my still rating to this day is 4 out of 10. Okay, have you seen the Batman? What did you think about it? Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for some more videos soon. And Gavin, out.